What if I told you the reason you were attractive was because you were breastfed, because your mother got adequate nutrition, because the past generations had enough fat-soluble vitamins in their diet? You guys should think I'm crazy, right? That genetics, blame genetics for needing braces, blame genetics for needing glasses. Genetics are the obvious explanation for everything. The reason you got cancer is because of genetics. Well, when we look a little deeper, you know, even just a few hundred years ago at indigenous groups of peoples that didn't have these problems, it becomes very obvious that modern diets and lack of vitamins in the diet are definitely a leading cause of these problems. Weston Price was a dentist in the early 1900s who went around studying all these indigenous groups because he was so curious why they did not get cavities. And back then, cavities were almost like a death sentence because you'd get an infection, you'd get an abscess, it'd be pretty much the most painful thing in the world and the teeth would literally try to leave uh, your body through the, the lower jaw. It's a pretty, it was a very painful thing that people would literally kill themselves over in the past. So modern cavities versus back then, very different thing guys. But we're gonna look at the facial structure of my grandfather and then some indigenous groups and make some parallels here and there, look at modern problems and just get you guys thinking about this, not necessarily educate you guys on this uh, because there's plenty of resources for that, but. A lot of you guys bring up Dr. John Mew and Dr. Mike Mew, and they believe that in their study of orthotropics, that breathing and facial posture affects facial development greatly, and it does. But the reason that your facial posture is incorrect is because your face didn't develop properly in the first place. If you don't have the adequate nutrition in your body, your dental arches don't develop, your, you know, although chewing and these various facial exercises and these devices can help fix the problem, it's not tackling the root cause, which is not being breastfed and not having adequate nutrition during developmental stages. So uh, let's look at a picture of my great grandfather. And, you know, he was a little shorter than me. So obviously, you know, Italians being short because of their high grain consumption, their diet. But if you look at his face, obviously, you know, in regards to proportions, I mean, his nose is, you know, we have similar nose sizes, I guess but his lower face and lower jaw is much wider and much better developed than mine. And you could see some you know, physical similarities between our, our, our looks, but the point is that his lips are properly developed. He has a much wider lower jaw, much more properly developed lower face. And this is gonna become more evident. You know, in me, I have a much narrower face than him, and you're gonna see in indigenous peoples have even wider faces than my grandfather. So you guys saying this is genetic, well, over the course of the past you know, few hundred years, our faces have been becoming narrower and narrower and even more drastic over the past few generations because of just the super drastic change in our diet. You know, Switching from you know, 60 to 70% animal foods to 20 to 30% with grains did this. And then the modern diet of now of what, 11 to 14% protein is causing these severe facial problems from receding chins, you know, narrowing of the jaw, these crazy, crazy, you know, facial development problems that people are having. Uh, and then if we look at Native Americans that have much wider jaw structures, just, uh, you know, not similar to my grandfather, but, you know, just in a sense that they're wider than mine and much more physically developed than mine. Uh, this is present in every indigenous group, and this is how humans are supposed to develop. You know, the Dinka tribes people uh, have proper lip, proper lower jaw, proper facial symmetry and development. And here's an example of a tribe person who was off that diet. You know, you start seeing the modern problems that we have now from various malocclusions to crooked teeth. Uh, here's another example of indigenous uh, sea islanders, I believe. You could tell, you know, physical impressiveness. They all have similar facial structures in regards to the width of their face. Margot Robbie is an example of a modern version of someone with, you know, fairly proper facial development, although, you know, not nearly as wide or as physically developed as indigenous people, you know, in regards to symmetry, you know, her face is like a smaller version of that, you know, it's symmetrical. Emily Ratajkowski, modern example. Uh, and then here, just, I just have some examples of models and people that are viewed as attractive and, you know, we can relate similar features, you know. Although if we look at this girl and compare her to, I don't know, this girl, like here we have Sarah Sampaio who has a very well-developed lips and lower jaw, but then this girl is like, oh, well, her lips are way more developed than hers. Obviously, there's different degrees of physical development we can see, and the only thing we can really relate those to is diet. And here's something interesting. Here's an Italian model, and here is 
a Russian model. And, you know, it's, you know, obviously the f they're very physically attractive, they're beautiful, and most people would maybe even consider the Italian girl more traditionally attractive, but we notice that there is, you know, the Italian girl has less developed lips than the Russian girl, who most likely had more animal foods in their diet, you know. It's definitely an interesting comparison to make. Uh, here's another example of a modern girl. Uh, I think there's some more pictures here. This was Weston Price's research of, you know, people with optimal face and physical development versus, you know, one generation on modern foods. You know, they start getting problems. You know, here's an example of more people with proper facial development and uh, just some really interesting things. Now, if we look at, you know, what this actually meant, you know, this guy's about to, I'll, I'll show you. Can everyone do that? You know, but that's literally what every indigenous person would have technically been able to do with that level of teeth development. And here's a, a modern example of Haley Baldwin opening beer bottles with her teeth. Boat, and we didn't have a bottle opener, mm -hmm. and I didn't want everybody to not have fun, so I was like, oh, you know what? Let me just try something. And I cracked it open with my tooth. Sixteen of them. Very wide lower face, properly developed teeth. And then here was just another interesting example. Uh, you know, they compared the indigenous people's eyesight to binoculars. And same thing with Native Americans. These people had much better eyesight than us. They could literally see miles and miles away where people can't even see in front of their faces. So I think I've kind of hammered home the point of this video and the importance of physical facial development. And even if we look up someone like LeBron James and a lot of basketball players, you'll notice, seem to have these facial features and proper development because the only real way they could have been that tall was uh, pretty much having a very high vitamin content in the diet and partly due to genetics as well. So, you know, obviously, you know, although I'm saying that diet is the main factor here, it's, it's diet over a period of generations. So it takes many, many generations to fix one generation of poor dieting. So although breastfeeding a child and giving them proper nutrition will allow their face and lower jaw to develop properly if we're talking in regards to you know why are italians shorter than a certain the dutch people you know it takes generations of consuming a high animal food diet to increase the average height now it, i mean if you took two italian people and put their child on a dutch person's diet would that increase their height i don't know that that experiment has never been done but i know that there is a significant importance in fat soluble vitamins in breastfeeding you know I think one un, one understatement that I really haven't talked about in this video is breastfeeding and the lack of breastfeeding leading to a lot of these problems and even when people are breastfed they still might not get adequate nutrition so that's kind of hard to say you know uh, I know modern soy formula and very poor nutrient breast milk I mean obviously the breast milk is better but the child still isn't getting the nutrients that they need to develop properly so if you guys want to explore this more, you know, you could look into, you know, Dr. Mike Mew, John Mew, Orthotropics, but I think a good baseline is uh, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston Price. Read that and then kind of, you know, start noticing these things. So this was just to kind of get that idea out there and for you guys to realize that the importance of these vitamins in the diet in regards to development because the one thing that all of these tribes people had in common was that they all consumed X amount of their calories from animal foods. And guys, we're not talking about grain-fed beef here. We're talking about wild animal foods, grass-fed organs, shellfish, seafood, egg yolks, very nutrient-dense animal foods. This has nothing to do with meat, guys. If it, and what really bothered me was Dr. Sean Baker said that, oh, look at the Eskimos, and he goes and eats five grain-fed ribeyes a day. Like, dude, you are completely, that is a ridiculous, is that not a ridiculous thing to say? To say, oh, we have, I have good physical development because I'm eating grain-fed ribeye when the Eskimos, it, please, that, that was just completely ridiculous. I just had to, I think I had to throw that in there for some of you guys that are going to start saying that. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support my channel, uh, please just share the video. Uh, I'll do a video on my jaw surgery and my before and after uh, in a future video. But you can kind of tell, like, my eyes and my eyebrows are very big for my face, you know? Same with my, no my nose is big for my face, even though I have a very tiny nose. Uh, just some pretty interesting things, guys.